Hello, my name is Bhagwan Chaudhary. I am a professor of finance at the Indian School of Business, ISP. Today, I'm speaking with my colleague, Professor Ashwini Chatre, who is a professor of economics and public policy, and he's the director for Bharti Institute of Public Policy at ISP. Thank you, Bhagwan. I'm very glad to be here and talking to you. So, Professor Chatre has a great idea for these special times. It's called Jumpstart India at ISP. So, Ashwini, the world has changed. And I don't think the world has changed temporarily, even though we may like to believe that illusion that COVID has come and it'll be gone. I think something fundamental has shifted. And as we come out of this, the world will look different. And we need to be ready for that world. So tell us about what your idea is. It combines three different elements. One is how do we use the lessons that we are learning even as we speak and bring them into the curriculum so that the, the leader of the futures that we are preparing at ISB can be prepared for similar outcomes and similar uh, crises tomorrow. We have to be prepared for a world and that this is not just because of the pandemics but also climate change and many other uh, uncertainties and vulnerabilities that we are beginning to identify. So the current crisis allows us excellent learning moments mm -hmm. and teaching moments. And I want to make sure that ISB is at the forefront of using this opportunity. So that's the first dimension. This is the motivation for thinking about Jumpstart India at ISB. So we want to lead them. We don't want to be passive watchers. We, in fact, want to contribute to it to make that change happen as the history unfolds. And the change that was already happening, which will accelerate because of this, yes. the, the teaching models, the learning models, the hybrid education, the, the role of online, how people interact with each other, not just in the classroom, but outside, was already changing. So the world in January 2021 would anyway have been different than January 2020. That's right. But yeah. now it will be different further along. Yeah. And we have this opportunity between January 2020 and 2021 to not just learn from the experience, but also contribute to it. Okay. So that the change is not just permanent, but in the right direction. Okay. Because we can backslide and we need to be aware of uh, what we are doing. So the first dimension is how can we use this opportunity to update and upgrade our learning and teaching and preparation of future leaders for industry to do something in the here and now. So that's the first part of it. Okay, so you use the two words, not just update, but upgrade. So we want to do it better and different. Yes, we want to be ahead of the curve. Yes. ISB was ahead of the curve. We moved our classes online before everyone else. We sent our students back home before anyone was talking about a lockdown. Yeah. And we were there with the best in the world, the Berkeleys and the Harvards and the Princetons and ISB were doing it together. Yeah. So we were already ahead of the curve and we will be ahead of the curve now okay. in how we adapt and how we leapfrog Okay. into that new future. The second uh, motivation is to use the expertise that we have at ISB and the tremendous resources that we, we gain every year in the form of our students. Their training, their experience, their expertise, and most of all, their motivation. When you combine it with what we have as our faculty resources across many areas of uh, intellectual uh, scholarship, we can make real contributions to how India responds to COVID and recovers from it. Okay, so let me make sure I understand. You are saying the resources, the intellectual resources we have combine not only faculty who are experts in different areas, but the students we get are a diverse set of students with 
experience in many, many different fields. And you want to be able to put it together to come up with real projects that will make a difference. And it combines two different things. I, I want to emphasize that. Yeah. The resources that students bring are tremendous. Yes. And I want to harness those in Absolutely. a systematic manner. Yeah. So the Jumpstart India initiative will have several projects where this expertise, this experience, this training will be put to use. So in the incoming class, we have someone who has a PhD in biomedical sciences yeah. and has been working in drug discovery and vaccine development. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, need I say more? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there and are... we, can, we can make <laughs> use of those uh, expertise right away. In combination with people who have experience in sales and marketing, with people who have experience in dealing with uh, public policy and uh, health policy and uh, doctors and hospitals and so on. And some of the faculty have already begun uh, and we, reaching out to various government agencies and whether various other uh, public service agencies on some of these projects already. Is that right? Not just reaching, working with working government with agencies. Yes, yeah. So we have the Max Institute for Healthcare that is already engaged. And the yeah. faculty that are affiliated with the center are already engaged in projects and not just now for, for the last few years. And the resources that students bring can be harnessed in meaningful ways to contribute to solving current challenges, okay. especially related to recovery. Yes. But the second part is the motivation. Yeah. Is these students, because of their diverse experience and they have chosen to come to ISB, these are people who are very smart, very experienced, and have chosen not to go to Harvard or Stanford or Princeton and so on, they already are, have a different perspective. They, they care about what they can meaningfully contribute and they are motivated to do so. And we are at this historic moment where we can combine faculty experience and experience and student experience and motivation to make a real contribution to how India not just responds to, but leapfrogs from the crisis. Okay, because so that there we, will be changes not just on health front and technology, but there will be changes on geopolitical uh, level as it, well. It's a different world. Yes, it is a different world. Okay. Yeah. And there was a third point you wanted to mention. The third point is our own efforts at moving forward on ISB 2.0. Because we, all, we were already aware that the world is changing and models of learning and teaching need to change in line with and tune with that new world, this opportunity provides us to sort of leapfrog into the future. An extra impetus, so to speak. So we were already involved in this digital <coughs> transformation and we were already involved in getting more experiential learning, more real life projects, and now we have to do it on real projects that are important. We have a great important. opportunity to yes. do it in a way that not just leapfrogs ISB into the sort of ahead of the Next, curve yeah. on the, the digital transformation and the, the experiential learning programs and so on, but contribute meaningfully to the recovery while building on the resources that we already have. Okay. So let me ask you a question that some students might ask you or us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, well, we are coming to ISB to learn and you are telling us to start this project right now. We haven't taken any classes. Are we ready? <laughs> well, they should talk to other students who are writing to me um, at midnight or later about their enthusiasm and willingness to contribute and start now. They don't want to wait until classes right. start. Yeah. So, of course, there, there may be some students who are uh, faced with that question. I have had a few of those as well, especially in terms of the YLPs, the, the Young Leadership Program, which don't have as much experience as some of the others in our cohort. I believe it is the motivation and training that matters. Because they all everyone, bring different strengths. They all bring different strengths. And they bring strengths. They are not just here to learn. Yeah. Because even if they think they are only here to learn, they are teaching their peers. Their peers are learning from them. 
Yeah. And the way we have set up the PGP schedule and the curriculum, peer learning is a very important part. Nobody is here only learning. Everyone yeah. is teaching. And let me mention at that point, faculty as well. It is wrong to think about it that faculty are here to teach, students are to learn. Okay. We are motivated because we as faculty learn every day from the projects, from our students, and from our interactions. And the students are the same way too. They will learn and they will teach each other and us. And, us. Yes. and, us. and there will be external uh, clients who are going to be very interested. And some of them have already started reaching out. These are state governments and public agencies that we have worked with in the past. And there is already a, a level of trust and a, a working relationship. This is the time when we put that trust to work and actually produce knowledge that contributes to solving current problems. Okay, so give us a few examples. Give me a few examples of the type of things you're thinking about, type of projects that we are going to engage the students and faculty together with some board members, ISB board members, and other players as well. So do you have some examples in mind? Uh, I, will, I will use a few. We have uh, uh, identified and outlined a small set of topics, challenges, grand challenges facing India. Uh, I'll take one, the informal economy. And being in a situation of comfort during the lockdown has made it even us, all of us, even more aware of how the large majority of our, our colleagues, our citizens are suffering in the informal economy because of yeah. the collapse of economic activity. The government is doing its best, but it's in many cases also flying blind. They are flying in the dark. They don't know where the informal economy is hurt the worst, where the migrants are, and what happens when they return, what kind of economic activity is possible, is safe, and can be re gradually uh, restarted. Yeah. What we would like to do is set up a series of projects that sort of helps us understand better what works and what doesn't work. It is not uh, uh, it's it's not uh, uh, possible to do this only by looking at uh, uh, sort of direct benefit transfers, for example. There are many other ways to do it. So there's many aspects to it. So there's aspects of you know how do we send aid, both in terms of cash and non-cash transfer, but also relocation, also transportation also their health concerns. So there are many faceted issues that we have suddenly become aware of and we need to find answers to these we have, we have become aware of their connections because all of them collectively affect how people react. And if we want people to restart economic activity safely, governments have to take decisions in real time based on information that is reliable. So one set of projects will look at how can we create these indices that allow governments to take action, take decisions based on real-time data. So that's one example of several projects. Uh, another example is economic policy. So it's not economic just policy. about relieving distress and uh, uh, providing food and uh, essential commodities and supplies to everyone, not just uh, in cities. Uh, if, we, if we think about economic policy, the aspects that touch us every day based on decisions that are made very far from where we are it is numerous. Now, all of these have to be made in real time. I was just reviewing uh, some of the orders that the government has issued. The Ministry of Agriculture has made 14 policy decisions in the last six weeks when the average usually is about three per year. Three right? per year. Agricultural okay. policy doesn't change very rapidly yeah. in India, which is unfortunate, but this is a great opportunity. And there is willingness in the government to act quickly in order to sort of make economic decisions, policy decisions, to change the reality on the ground. Now, none of this can be done without access to insights, about access to data, about access to knowledge about what is going on yeah 
And if we can bring together a small set of projects that look at different aspects of economic policy as it is affecting uh, MSMEs, as it is affecting uh, agri-food processing, as it is affecting automotive uh, industries, both the backward and forward linkages, it will help the government make decisions in ways that directly benefit those who are in distress. So there are two aspects to it. One is, how do we make sure that these small MSMEs and other companies stay afloat? So there's economic policy that is going to determine that. But you're saying even to know what's the level of economic activity requires creation of indices, creation of data sets that tell us in real time what is going on. And ISB is involved in both of these projects in a very meaningful way. Multiple projects. So there Multiple are projects. different ways in which the government is unable to figure out what is going on. Right? It's not yeah. just that they don't have information on this. For example, they don't have information on jobs. It is a several months and sometimes a year before we find out what is the rate of unemployment. Yeah. So and now we can actually do it with alternate data. We can have... Uh, some proxies. Some which proxies. Which is imperfect and possibly imprecise, but, but real time. But because, and that makes it extremely useful. And we can learn as we collect more data, we can learn for what kinds of data works in what kind of decision making, okay. which we don't. Okay. I can see that a lot of students and faculty are already excited about it and yes. they're going to be engaged. But people who are watching it, some of them are our own alumni. And some of them are friends of ISB. They would probably want to know how they can help. Uh, is there a way our alumni or friends of ISB can reach out to us? Yes, we will be setting up a system shortly. First, for uh, eliciting student interest, because that is our primary yeah. uh, objective, to use Jumpstart India in ways that advances learning. Yes and uh, is incorporated into the curriculum in ways that contributes to the national interest. But there are many other stakeholders that will be able to contribute directly, not just as consumers of or the knowledge could that suggest, is produced. They could suggest that these are the real problems. They could tell us what we should be looking at. So there will be a mechanism, there will be an email address that you will advertise that people can write to. Yes, so the email address is already alive and functioning. It is jumpstartindia at isb.edu. Jumpstartindia so at isb.edu. Okay. Who, for those who uh, cannot wait, please write in. And ideas, comments, suggestions, offers of expertise, data, all are welcome at this stage because we are just setting it up. But there are two other ways in which I would welcome engagement. One is I will make sure that all engagement, all activities, and all uh, events that happen under this uh, program are accessible and visible to everyone, right? Uh, either in the form of a dedicated page on the ISB website or other social media yeah. channels, such as a Facebook page, uh, Facebook group on the ISB Facebook page, where there will be different topics, where there will be discussions on different projects. Oh, that's excellent. So that people can follow what progress is happening. Yeah. Then we have also repurposed an ongoing project that was designed for dissemination, the indiadataportal.com. This mm -hmm. is something that is incubated at the Bharti Institute and makes public data available for journalists to interact with and visualize. It allows journalists who don't have uh, coding skills and know how to visualize to visualize it on site, on the website. So they can choose the data set that they want and visualize it and import it directly into their news articles. And it will be available uh, shortly in multiple languages in India. Right now it is only in English. So we will repurpose all the data and work that is happening under Jumpstart India and make it available on the India data portal for anyone, citizens, civil society organizations, uh, researchers, students, as well as media persons to go there and interact with the data that we are producing and disseminate it in ways that you see fit. Okay. 
Excellent. So we will also uh, have several uh, videos we'll create that we'll put on the website and we will have panel discussions and conversations like this throughout this process to keep people engaged and to welcome them with their ideas and their suggestions. And also to acknowledge good suggestions and good ideas that yes. push the envelope and help us do a better job. Okay. I think uh, I am excited and uh, I think many of our faculty and students are excited and we look forward to reaching out to you more and uh, stay tuned and let's work together. The world is different, but we are ready for it. Jumpstart India at ISB. Thank you, Ashwini. Thank you, Bhagwan. Looking forward to it. <laughs>